Hello and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. Now, I don't know if you've heard, but we've got ourselves a new king here in the UK, guys. That's right, King Charles is about to be crowned this weekend. Big news. Uh, we thought it was a great excuse just to make something delicious and then make it gold because I hear the royals love a bit of gold um, and I know that someone behind the camera by the name of Dane also loves a bit of gold. He's famous for it. But anyway, it's going to be a most delicious pavlova crown. It's going to have some of my favourite things on it. Chantilly cream, caramelised white chocolate, multi corn flakes, and a variety of golden fruit. And it's going to have a crisp outer shell and a lovely mallowy inside. And it is going to be delish. So let's start by making the multi corn flakes because they don't take very long to bake. And pavlovas famously take ages to bake and then you have to cool them in the oven. So you don't want to be waiting around for your oven just to make these little dudes. So these are really simple. This recipe is actually in the Crumbs and Doilies recipe book. Um, frankly, I think it's one of the tastiest things in there. Whenever we make it, it's impossible to keep it from being nibbled just constantly. So you lock that up, guys. Once you've made them, lock it up. Don't let anyone near it, otherwise you won't have any left to put on your pavlova. Very simple. I've got some dry ingredients here. I've got 15 grams of Horlicks, uh, which is a malted milk powder. I recommend you use this rather than Ovaltine because Ovaltine has chocolate in it. So I'm going to mix together my Horlicks along with some 15 grams of caster sugar, a good pinch of salt, and just give that a little whisk to combine it. And then just pop that to one side. And I also have 35 grams of melted butter, which is lovely and molten. And I'm going to pour it over 60 grams of cornflakes. Now, these are just regular plain cornflakes, not the frosted kind, although if you wanted to get involved in that, by all means do. And then just give it a really good toss around using a spoon or a rubber spatula. Make sure all of the cornflakes are coated in the butter. And then sprinkle on that magic multi dust and then give that a really good toss around too. Make sure every bit of cornflake is coated in the lovely multi goodness. Once you've done that, you can pour it all onto a lined baking tray and just give it a little shuffle around to make sure they're all spread out. And then you want to bake these at 150 degrees C for 10 to 12 minutes. They're going to be ever so slightly more golden. And when they come out of the oven, just break them up a little bit to stop them from sticking together too much. And you want to leave your cornflakes to cool down completely um, but before putting them into an airtight container. And they'll keep in an airtight container for a about a month but to be honest they won't last that long because they're so delicious trust me and actually we're only using a very small amount of that load um, in the pavlova crown so to be honest go nuts just nibble away anyway speaking of pavlova let's get on with making it so the thing i love most about pavlovas is that because of the size of it um, and the way that you bake it and also the addition of corn flour and vanilla the inside never quite gets crispy it stays really soft and mallowy but you still get that crispy outer shell that you expect from a meringue which makes this like the perfect vessel for desserts and cream and fruit and all the yummy things so i'm going to make it into a crown shape and i'm going to do that by making a template so i've got a piece of grease proof paper here i'm going to draw around a bowl just with um, a pencil or a pen is fine and then draw around that and then draw around a smaller item. I'm using a glass just in the middle to create a nice chubby ring, which you can use as a template for your crown. Then just flip your greaseproof paper upside down so that the pencil isn't going to come into contact with the meringue. If you've got any flappy bits that might waft about in the oven, just pin them down with bulldog clips. Now, with all meringue, it's best to make sure that all your equipment that's coming into contact with the egg whites is really clean and grease free. So I always give my equipment a little wipe with some vinegar. You could even do it with a lemon, just to make sure there's no grease. And that is especially true of egg yolk. If you get any egg yolk in your egg white, then it needs to go, guys, because it's going to pre totally prevent your egg whites from whipping up. Um, we're going to need five egg whites for this pavlo, which is a lot, but it's going to be a big guy. Um, so I'm going to put my um, bowl on a weighing scale, because as always with meringues, you want twice the amount of sugar to egg. <laughs> um, so I'm going to weigh mine. So just crack it directly into the bowl on the scale. And if you do get yolks in there, just you're going to have to start again. Sorry, guys. OK, that's 172, which it did take me a little while to work this out, but it's 344, right? OK, <laughs> 344 grams of sugar that is required. So back on the scales and guys, this is just exactly why you need yourself a set of digital scales. And if you don't have a set yet, then I don't know what to say. The best sugar to use is the finest sugar you can find, but not icing sugar, because confectioner's sugar or icing sugar does also have other ingredients which help to stop it from clumping, and they'll stop your meringues from whipping up. So don't use icing sugar, use caster sugar. 
but I like to go the extra mile and process my sugar even further to make it as fine as possible. So I just do that in a food processor. I dump it all in and then blitz it for a minute or two just to get it as fine as possible and it goes ever so slightly more fine and I recommend that you do this especially if caster sugar is something that's quite difficult to find where you are. I know that in, in the States granulated sugar is as kind of as good as it gets unless you're in like a specialist shop. So blitz your sugar, use a pestle and mortar if you don't have a food processor and then weigh double your weight of egg whites. Three forty-four, exactly. So now it's time to get whisking. All the eggs go into your stand mixer. I've got a balloon whisk attachment. If you want to do this by hand, fair play. I'm not going to argue, but I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> so drop your uh, mixer down and get it started on the lowest speed possible. The reason you want to start slow is because you want to build up those strong protein strand bonds. As strong as possible and if you start off really fast they're not going to be strong they're going to be um, really unstable and you might end up with a deflated or cracked or weeping or just unattractive meringue and you don't want that so start off slow let it do its thing for a minute or two and then turn up the speed a little bit and then turn it up a little bit more whisk around for 30 seconds to a minute and what you're looking for before you start putting the sugar in is for it to look like a bubble bath, like a luxurious bubble bath. So it should be foamy but not stiff. And then with the whisk still going round at that medium speed, start adding the sugar. Just do it a tablespoon at a time. The reason you want to do it slowly is because you still want to build up that strength in the protein strands so that you don't get an unstable egg. And also you don't want to deflate all that air you've put in already. My meringue has been whizzing around for about, well, it's been like 10 minutes now, and as you can see, it's really glossy, it's pretty stiff, and also my sugar has dissolved. So now it's basically ready, but we need to put something in it to stabilize it and also flavor it a little bit. So I'm gonna keep, get that back on, keep it doing its thing, and make what I like to call a slurry, which is corn flour. I know it's not a very nice word, but it, that's what it's called, guys. Um, two teaspoons of corn flour, a teaspoon of vinegar, I'm just using apple cider vinegar, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract, which I'm going to whisk together. And it'll, obviously, because corn flour is really weird, it'll start off getting being really stiff, but then it'll go to completely to liquid, and that is your slurry. And then just while the whisk is still going round, just pour that in, just down the side, so it doesn't ping all over the place. And what that's gonna do is stabilize your meringue and also, it will keep it from baking really firm. So it will keep those, the center of the pavlova really mallowy and fluffy and pillow-like and delicious. So just let that run for a few more seconds just to make sure it's all really well incorporated. And that is your pavlova meringue. Done, look at that. It's like a cool hairdo, like a quiff. Now we need to put it onto our template, of course. And I've actually put my, my baking sheet onto a, a turntable just because it makes it a bit easier to, you know, spin. <laughs> so I'm going to dollop big, generous blobs using my template as a guide all around the circle. It is looking mighty crown-like as it is, but we need to bake it, guys. So I've got my oven preheated to 130 degrees C. It's a fan-assisted oven, guys, as per usual. Um, whack it in there. And actually, I'm only gonna bake it for 10 minutes 
at that temperature. When the 10 minutes is up, you want to turn your oven down to 100 degrees. Don't open the door, don't do anything of the sort, but set your timer for 95 minutes and that should bake it through. But then when the 95 minutes is up, turn the oven off again, don't open the door, just leave it in there and it will cool down really slowly. It will continue to cook a little bit, but very, very slightly and you'll end up with a crispy outer shell and a mallowy inside and I can't wait. Welcome back and look at this guy. I'm so proud of him. He did so well in the oven. You know, you miss them when they're in the oven and you, you just don't know how they're gonna turn out, but this one's lovely. It's crisp all over. Most importantly, it's crisp on the base. If it's not, <laughs> then it's not gonna be cooked properly, but it'll still be really lovely and mallowy inside, so don't despair. You can chuck a load of cream on it and it'll taste delicious. So here's my crown, but he's looking pretty basic right now. We need to jazz him up because it's a coronation after all and he's going to be, you know, having his moment in the spotlight. So I've got all my bits and bobs that I'm going to adorn it with. Um, obviously my multi corn flakes, which are just so tempting. I, it's been a real struggle not to just eat all of those. I also have some caramelized white chocolate, which is one of my favorite things to use. We use it all the time in the bakery and you've seen us make it a ton of times before. It's really simple. Just whack some good quality white chocolate into the oven at 120 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour, but every 10 minutes, give it a really good stir. And what you end up with is this like luscious, golden, warm, smelling, amazing, delicious stuff. Um, so that's there. I've got it in a piping bag for drizzling. And I've also got, you know, some fruit because a pavlova needs fruit, I think, because this is very sweet. So we need some like tartness to cut through all of that. It is the crown, it is the coronation. So I've made some of it gold. Blackberries are the best for making gold. So all I did there was I just put them into a bowl, tossed some um, luster dust over it and, and then just gave it a little jiggle around. And so they're these beautiful gold, very decadent looking nuggets of juiciness. So those are gonna look great. Also got blueberries, I've got some red fruits just for a bit of like jewel-like pizzazz. What does a pavlova need other than all of this stuff? cream guys you can't have a pav without cream so i'm using whipping cream um, i find it's a bit more stable than double cream and a little bit lighter as well so i've got about 500 grams but to be honest it's a bit of a up to you situation if you want like more cream or less cream you do you so i'm going to whip it together with four tablespoons of icing sugar which i've sifted and I'm going to add a teaspoon and a bit maybe of um, good quality vanilla extract as well, just for a little bit of flavor. And then using my uh, trusty hand mixer, get whipping to just before it hits stiff peaks. All right, the reason I like to stop it when it gets to floppy <laughs> is because I, it is just so easy to overbeat cream, what's it called, cream. <laughs> so I've actually taken my prongs out and I'm going to finish it off by hand to get it to just the right consistency. Lovely soft peaks, perfect for my pav. Uh, it's kind of a nightmare when you go overdo the cream, but you can get it back. If you overbeat it, you just pop a little bit of cream back into the mix and whisk it through and it should come good. It's assembly time though, guys. Now, I like to put a little bit of cream on first because that way everything else has got a bit of a bed. I'm gonna start by dolloping a generous amount of whipped cream all over the top of my crown. Then I'm gonna grab my caramelized white chocolate, which I've put in a piping bag and is still lovely and liquidy and molten and just zigzag that all over the top of the cream. Just really cover it. Put more cream all over the top of that, all around the crown, and that's gonna create a really nice bed for all that lovely fruit. Of course, the very fancy pants, golden blackberries. They have to get their moment. Just dot them here and there. And then also we've got the blueberries. I'm gonna dot here and there. Uh, don't forget, you've got your lovely multi corn flakes, which you absolutely have to include. So sprinkle some of those all over the top as well. Then, you know, this is the coronation, so why not get more gold? I'm using a bit of extra gold spray just to spray all over everything, make it glitzy and glam. And then just to make this even more bejeweled and crown-like, I've got some raspberries and the pomegranates are really gonna pop against all those lovely golds and whites.
Oh my goodness, guys, this pavlova crown looks incredible, ridiculously regal. I put it on my head, but I want to eat it more. So I'm going to get my knife out and have a little piece. Mm, where do I start? It's all sort of squishy and mallowy inside. Mm. Yummy. All right, I'm gonna have a, I'm going in, guys. Let's go. Oh, look at that, just collapses in a good way. I want a blueberry, I want a bit of everything. Mm. Oh my goodness. It's like gone now, it's disappeared, it's so light. This is perfect. It's got the crispy outer shell that you need from meringue, but all that mallowy, squishy flumpiness inside. A little caramelized white chocolate hit, that crunchy multi corn flake, and a little bit of like tartness from the fruit. It's got everything. I want to go into for some more. Mmm. -mm. Well, absolutely divine. Well, look, let us know in the comments section if you are going to be watching the coronation. I imagine it's going to be glam and glitzy and really over the top so it should be quite entertaining so if you're watching maybe you're even going there maybe you're going actually braving london to physically be there goodness well if you are let us know um, <laughs> and if you do make this pavlova crown then for goodness sake take pictures of it and put them all over your socials and tag us we absolutely love seeing your bakes because it tells us we're doing something right if you guys are baking it. Um, and if you want to see more of our baking antics, then why not become a member of the Bake Club over on Patreon? We'll put a link to that down there. Um, you get extra content, you get downloadable PDFs of all the recipes we put up, even ones from like way back when. If you want to do that, we appreciate you. And um, everyone who's done that so far, we, we absolutely love that you're making such a great commitment to supporting the channel. It really does help us to create all that great content that you like so much. Um, but if you're not able to do that right now, don't worry, you can just subscribe to the channel. That's totally free. And if you click on the little bell icon, you'll get a notification every time you upload, so you won't miss anything. You're still getting all this good stuff and we love you too we love you all of you whoever you are so um yeah thanks so much for joining me i hope you have a lovely coronation weekend i hope it's sunny i really really hope it's sunny it'd be really awkward if it wasn't <laughs> i hope you have fun, lots of fun making this pavlova and i can't wait to share another recipe with you so i'll see you another time